Hello friends, this video on DNF Block Elements Part 20 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let's talk about the chemical reactivity of D block elements. See, these transition metals, so the D block elements actually, they vary widely in terms of chemical reactivity. Some of these are reactive, some of these are not reactive. Some of these are sufficiently electropositive that they dissolve in the mineral acids while some of them are noble and they are not impacted by acids, simple acids. But actually if you compare with SNP block elements, SNP blocks, transition metals are, or the D blocks, are the less reactive. They are less reactive as compared to SNP block elements. Okay, typically these transition metals, they form bond with, you have seen oxygen, or halogens and sulfur. So due to the reaction between transition metals with oxygen, halogens and sulfur, you get oxides, halides and sulfides. And that's why we have seen that most of the transition metals are found in the ores and these ores are typically halides, oxides and sulfide. If we talk about the oxides, transition metal directly combined with oxygen at high temperature to form oxide for example metal oxides m2o3 mo m3o4 mo2 m2o5 mo3 m2o all these are different varieties of oxide okay and all has this variable oxidation state for example this has plus 2 oxidation state this has plus 1 this has how much? This has plus 3 oxidation state, plus 5 oxidation state, plus 4. So now if you see they have variable oxidation states. Now if we talk about the um, acidic and basic nature of this metal oxides, when these metal oxides are in the lower oxidation state, lower oxidation state, when they are in the lower oxidation state, they actually show basic characteristic okay basic characteristic for example m and o this is basic vanadium oxide titanium oxide these are all basic or feo is also basic when they are in the higher when this metal oxides are in the higher oxidation state where in the higher oxidation state they behave like acid so they have acidic character for example VO2, MN2O3, CO right like this MNO2 for example if you see MNO is basic MNO2 is acidic and when they are in, in intermediate oxidation state In fact, Mn2O7 is, is actually has a higher oxidation state plus 7. This is actually acidic. Okay. Or let's take higher oxidation states. V2O5 or CrO3. Here we have plus 6 oxidation state. Here you have plus 5 oxidation state. So these are all acidic. Our intermediate oxidation state, they are actually amputary. And the example for these are VO2, CuO, CrO2, these are all amphotrophic. Even MnO2 is also an example of amphotrophic reactor. Okay. Now the question is why this lower oxidation state is basic and higher oxidation state is acidic? See the lower oxidation state, some of the valence electrons are not involved in the bonding. Okay. The lower oxidation state, some of the valence electrons are not involved in the bonding and since they are free, they behave as base. Okay, but in case of higher oxidation state, almost all the electrons, valence electrons are involved in bonding. So no free electrons is available and thus they accept electrons. So these guys accept electron and they act as acid. They have free electrons, they sometimes donate electron and they act as base. 
okay good example mno is base mn2 also is acetate and mno2 is amputry okay the next is we'll discuss about the chemical reactivity of halides so we'll talk about chemical reactivity of halides now we we'll discuss the oxides reactivity acetic basic and amphoteric right so halogen again you take halogen you take transition metal again you need to go for high temperature and you get halide similar to what we have seen oxygen plus transition metal plus high temperature you get oxide similarly here you get transition metal halide when you react halogen with transition metal at high temperature if you talk, talk about the rate of reaction rate of reaction so in this case fluorine is most reactive then chlorine then bromine and then iodine okay and if you see this fluorine actually forms ionic bond why because it is very uh, electronegative so if the electronegative difference between two compounds is high you get ionic bond but these electronegativity is not that much so it typically forms covalent bond with transition metal okay and i have already told that the transition metal displays high oxidation state in case of oxygen and fluorine and fluorine is again my uh, uh, halogen so if you see if you talk about cuft for example this is ionic and if you talk about cucl2 or cubr2 these are covalent okay if we talk about the sulfide as i told we'll talk about oxygen halogen and sulfur transition metal typically reacts with oxygen halogen and sulfur so again in this case i have transition metal it reacts with sulfur you to get sulfide you can use sulfur or you can also use actually h2s okay for example copper ions react with h2s give copper sulfide and h plus ions and in sulfides we typically get low oxidation state we have seen that oxidation state is higher only in case of oxygen and fluorine other cases the oxidation state is lower so in sulfides also we have low oxidation state and sulfides are typically colored in fact most of the transition metals are ions are colored we'll see the property and the sulfides are typically water insoluble transition metal sulfides are water insoluble now we'll talk about the chemical reactivity comparison with respect to standard electrode potential okay please note this e not is nothing but e not reduction and this is calculated against hydrogen that is she standard hydrogen electrode okay this is for a typical reduction reaction okay now if you see that one with the negative value of e not see if the value is negative that means the reverse reaction is possible for example m plus 2 to m if the value is negative that means the reverse reaction that is m to m 2 plus is feasible if negative okay so if you see here this value is highly negative so this says that for titanium titanium to titanium plus actually e oxidation is nothing but minus of minus 1.63 that is plus of 1.63 volt that means this reaction is highly feasible and titanium has a tendency to get oxidized that means titanium is a strong reducing agent the strong reducing agent because titanium has tendency to oxidize itself that means reduce other titanium is a strong reducing agent same thing apply for vanadium if you see vanadium to vanadium 2 plus actually e oxidation comes out to be plus 1.18 volt this is a big number that means vanadium has a tendency to get oxidized and vanadium is a good reducing agent same thing applies for chromium also same thing applies for manganese also okay now if we talk about oxidizing agent let's see these values let's see the values of this one 
ओके एम एन थ्री प्लस टू एम एन टू प्लस दिस ई रिडक्शन इज पॉजिटिव वैल्यू इज प्लस वन पॉइंट फाइव सेवन Since it is plus 1.57, that means this reaction is feasible. That means manganese has tendency to reduce itself. So manganese plus three is a good oxidizing agent. Please note, manganese plus three is a good oxidizing agent, not manganese plus two. Right? Similarly, titanium and vanadium are good oxidizing oxidizing agent. Sorry, titanium and vanadium are good re reducing agent, not titanium plus two and vanadium plus two. Okay. Okay. So manganese plus three is a strong oxidizing agent okay similarly if you talk about this guy 1.97 this was a huge number that is cobalt 3 plus is getting reduced to cobalt 2 plus and in the meantime this 1.97 volt of energy is released that means it has huge tendency to reduce that means it is a good oxidizing agent so actually with the value of e not that is standard hydrogen electrode value we can actually tell or comment about the reactivity of transition metals okay thank you visit examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online tests get pre study materials find tutors and mentors and much more thanks once again